Hey there, John Shorby here from ReallyEasyGuitarLessons.com and in this video lesson I'm going to teach you how to play a really easy strummy version of Margaritaville by Jimmy Buffett. So I did All the Ways I Want You a few weeks ago and I had some requests to do a Margaritaville um, in honor of the late great Jimmy Buffett. I've played this song countless times in bars all across the great state of Pennsylvania and Texas and um, it always gets a very, very good reaction. So this is, again, really easy strummy version, open position chords, simple strumming pattern. Although, you know, I, I believe that there is a, an acoustic guitar track on the recording that is basically doing what I'm doing now. But this is designed for the solo acoustic performance, just strumming chords with a simple strumming pattern. So I'm going to show you what chords are used, what the strumming pattern is, how the chord progressions lay out and the structure of the song. So let's jump in and get going. All right, so I have Jimmy's isolated vocal and I'm gonna play guitar along with him. I'm gonna just demonstrate what it's gonna sound like. I'm gonna do the intro, I'm gonna do the first verse and the first chorus and then we'll break down what the chords and strumming are. Let's start with the chords used, only three of them. We got a D, open D, second fret G, third fret B, second fret E. Is there a D chord? And then we have an A, which you can play two ways, either scrunch all your fingers into that second fret of the D, G, and B string, or I'm gonna play it as a little bar where I'm holding my one finger down on the D, G, and B string, playing from the A string down. And then the last chord is a G. Third fret E, second fret A, open D, open G, third fret B, third fret E. So three chords, D, A, and G. Gotta know how to play those before you can move on. And I also recommend if you are not good at changing between D, A, and G, to spend some time just doing what I'm doing right now. Just get faster at your chord changes. It'll make everything a lot easier. All right, organizing those chords into chord progressions, we first we have the intro, which is gonna be D for a measure, a measure being four beats. So one, two, three, four, change to G. Two, three, four, change to A. One, two, three, four, and then hang on D for two measures. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then for our verses, we're gonna do D for six total measures, and then A for eight total measures, and then back to D for two measures, all right? So D for six, A for eight, D for two. For our chorus, we're gonna have G for one, A for one, D for two measures. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then you repeat that idea again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then now we do G for a bar, A for a bar, and then now we have a split measure where the D is on beat one, one, two, and then the A is on beat three, four. So that's, that's where he sings woman to blame. There's a woman to blame. One, two, three, four. And then G, two, three, four. Back to A, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
four D two three four D two three four. Um, before I go to the bridge, I just want to add in now what the strumming pattern is. We're doing the very popular one, two, and and four and one, two, and and four and down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Okay, so one iteration of that strumming pattern equals one measure. So if you're doing that, you know, if you see on my little chord chart here, if it's underlined once, you're doing it once. If it's underlined four times, you're doing it four times. For the split measure, I would just play the chord once and let it hold out one, one, two, three, four, G, two, three, four. And then pick up that strumming pattern back on the A chord. So let me play the, the chorus with strumming. So you can see what I'm talking about. So we got G, A, D twice. And then G, A, D twice. And we got G, A, D, A, G. And then back to A, twice. So for the bridge, this is where there's like the little steel drum solo, and it's kind of like a, a mix between what's played in the verse and what's played in the chorus. So you're on the D for six measures, and then you're on the A for two measures, and then you're kind of going through the last half of the chorus. G for a bar, A for a bar, split D, A, G, then you hang on the A, and then the D. So here, I'll just go ahead and play through the bridge with strumming. Last thing is on the outro. So you, after the third chorus, mm -hmm. he kind of just repeats the last line of the uh, last lines of the chorus. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play along with him and show you what it sounds like. All right, so here I'm gonna play through the third chorus all the way through to the outro, so you can hear how it all lays out. Action that helps me hang on. Wasting away again in Margaret. Searching for my lost sugar song. Some people claim that there's a wall on the blame, but I know it's my own damn fault. Yes, and some people claim. All right, so here's the order of the song. You have the intro, then you have the first verse and first chorus. You have the second verse and second chorus, which are identical to the first verse and first chorus. You have your bridge, third verse, same as the first two, third chorus, same as the first two, and then your outro, which is just the, essentially the uh, last part of the chorus again and the intro again. So pretty straightforward, very easy to get your head around. And like with all really easy strummy versions of songs, process is always the same. Make sure you know the chords first, only three of them in this case, very common, D, G, and A. Focus on changing between them if your chord changes are not up to snuff. Um, when you're adding strumming to the mix, make sure that your hands are in sync, that there's no gaps in between uh, your chord changes. If there is, that is a signal that you need to work more on your chord changes. Feel free to play this by yourself, but if you wanna work on your rhythm and your timing, I recommend either doing this to a metronome or playing along to the recording. You could always slow the recording down if you have trouble keeping up, but that will help keep your rhythm and your strumming nice and steady. All right, that's it for this video lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.